Good afternoon, folks. How are y'all doing this evening? This afternoon. I said this evening because I know a lot of people watch it later on in the day after they get off work. Work. I used to know what that was. <laughs> now work is more uh, time spent here thinking about I'm supposed to be somewhere and I can't remember where it is. Right now I'm supposed to be on tour with with my band and John Hyatt. Hi John and uh, hello fellows. Sorry we're getting closer to uh, having more people up here with me and nobody wants that more than I do but I want to be safe about this stuff folks. Uh, this is no laughing matter. But uh, we're under a tornado watch here in Nashville, Tennessee today, and uh, <laughs> we're going to play. If it starts blowing this building down, <clears throat> you'll know about it. The music will stop. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bunch of songs for you today. You know, it's been a, it's been a wild week. Uh, the last two weeks have been wild. I mean, the conventions have been going on. Great. Everybody knows what they're dealing with. Everybody can make a choice a little easier than they could before. But, uh, you know, life goes on. So here I am. I'm going to play some music. Get out of that big old sad funk you're in. Ain't no sense in wasting your time in there. We'll do this. This will be more fun. Here's a little, uh, somebody asked for a little Union, union House branch. I'm going to try to play that uh, today. Okay. Wait a minute, that is so fast. Who would want to play that that fast? version of it there, a uh, little aversion. I wrote that song to uh, to get Alison Krauss to uh, play more fiddle uh, in Acus and it worked. Uh, I don't think she was real happy with me about uh, some of those parts, but hell, she nailed it anyway. She's good. She can do anything. Uh, she got over it. Wow, folks, it's a uh, it's a little crazy out there, isn't it? It's, uh, I mean, this whole weather thing has got me all upset. There, not too much, not too much tuning today. Here, uh, somebody wanted to also hear 
uh, a song of a, a song. This is a I heard it on a Rai Cooter record, which a uh, Bop to You Drop, which was the first digital record. Did you know that? Bop to You Drop, amazing sounding record. And um, uh, Rai Cooter put out that record. But before that, this song was cut by I Can Tina Turner. And uh, it's a song called Everything is Going to Work Out Fine. And so there you go. Look it up. <laughs> to you know it will always does it's gonna be all right take it from me <laughs> uh, you know folks next week we're not gonna do this next week because uh, I have something to do that's gonna take me it's gonna it's gonna take up my time that day and Actually, uh, as, far as, uh, as far as as far as as far as that goes, you know, I'm just uh, I'm just not able to do it every week. I'd like to, but sometimes I can't. So next week we won't have next Friday we won't have one, but uh, we'll see about the next we'll see about the next Friday. 
we'll, we'll, we'll try to do it then. So uh, uh, we'll, I'll take a week off next week. You got it. You got it. You got pictures and you got words. Okay. Here, here's, a, here's a song that I, I wrote, uh, sort of an exercise, uh, and uh, put it on the, the band album on, on uh, What If. What if? What a what a great title! Now that I've now that it's come out and and been out for a while, uh, the title of the of the record makes even more sense to me uh, than it did when we cut the record. But I was really proud of it. It was it was uh, nominated for a Grammy, and we went to New York to the Grammys that year, and uh, we didn't win. But hey, the spectacle! It was worth it. And uh, the my saxophone player Jamil. Uh, proposed to his wife in the middle of uh, in the middle of a song that she really wanted to hear that was on stage. So she said, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> she didn't know what he was proposing. So he just stood there with this, like he'd been hit with a, a fish, uh, you know, waiting for the song to end on stage. Then he proposed and she went, she went wild. So every, and everything worked out good. And they've got two little babies now. Oh, it's gonna, it's just gonna be the, they got the greatest life. And, uh, and, uh, I hope, I hope you do too. Uh, I've had my grandson over here lately and it's a blast. He's, uh, I'm gonna teach that boy how to play the dobro. He's already playing, you know, every little kid picks up a, a plastic guitar and they turn it around the wrong way or they put it on their lap. And, uh, there you got a dobro player on the way if you, if you see that. So, uh, Get them something, get them something good to play right away. Well, get them something they can fall on and crush first, and then and then say say you look now. See, you got to be a little bit more careful than get them a something a little more expensive. Don't spend all your money at once. Uh, uh, this is called "What If," and it's a it's a it's a departure. It's a departure from what I have usually done, but uh, it started as an exercise and turn into a, a song. So let's do that. Here we go.
huh uh i i played that for uh chris Thiele and he said oh it's debussy and i said oh yeah well yeah i guess it it relates to that i mean i had not been listening to debussy but after he told me that i did <laughs> and yeah he was right there are some movements in there that are that are kind of like that well i i think i should play something a little fast but first First, <laughs> Miss Barbara is back in town. <laughs> and Miss Barbara sees, saw last week my great friend J.D. Crow, the banjo king of all time. Man, there's Earl Scruggs and Sonny Osborne and, and uh, J.D. Crow and Bill Emerson and, you know, Charlie Cushman. And guys like that, that when they play the banjo, I really like it. Bill, uh, Bela, okay, Bela. He's too easy to remember, so I forget. But just amazing guys can do that with a banjo. But Jay, you know what? J.D. Crow laid some groundwork for people that they'll never be able to play the banjo without what he taught them. And uh, it's just impossible. It's like Earl Scruggs, J.D. Crow. That's, that's the order. That's the order it goes in. If you don't listen to J.D. Crow and uh, Earl Scruggs, then J.D. Crow. But er, J.D. is so amazing. I played in a band with J.D. and uh, I'm going to drop some names. Tony Rice, Ricky Skaggs, and Bobby Sloan. Bobby was the funniest guy in the band. Just a hilarious guy. Would He would put these, what we, they used to have these little things that would, um, uh, called cigarette loads that you'd put in a cigarette and somebody'd start smoking their cigarette and the cigarette would blow up. You know, they're kind of dangerous. But he would, Bobby, when we were traveling, that short time that I was in the band, we were all out there. Bobby would put up, <coughs> sm uh, JD smoked these uh, cigars called Have a Tampa. They had a little wooden tip on the end, you know, you, you smoke. And uh, Bobby wouldn't put one in the end. He'd what put it way down inside the cigar, way down in the middle, past the middle of the cigar. And, and Crow liked to drive. So Crow would be driving, 
and all of a sudden he'd be he'd be really getting into the good part of that cigar and kaboom it would go off and you know bobby could have killed us all but we're still here and uh <clears throat> but jd crow uh gave me some of the best best uh I don't know. He's a teacher. He's a teacher without trying to be a teacher. He's a teacher. This tone, timing, tuning, and feel, man, the guy has a feel and it's, it's uh, just something you don't, you don't come up on that often when, and man, he loved to walk up behind me with his banjo and, and thump the head of his banjo real loud. And I would just like change clothes later. Uh, <laughs> spare you the details, but, um, we had a great time on the road, you know, we went to Japan, eye open experience for this little, little kid from Ohio, but, uh, JD Crow was one of the greatest uh, human beings too, that I've ever met. Really nice guy. You know that already, if you've ever talked to him and, and, uh, I'll, I can't go without mentioning, uh, tomorrow is Sean Camp's birthday, the lead singer for the Earls of Leicester and the guy who was the final linchpin of that that the final call that i made not knowing if he would even be interested in it could do it or not but showed up in uh, lester flat guard tie hat boots old guitar everything sang sang and chill bumps just went up my spine so he was the guy that that uh pretty much when we started playing when that band started playing we got through half a song and i said this is it. This is it. This is as close as I'll ever get to playing with Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs and the Foggy Mountain Boys. I am Josh Graves right now. I, I can't believe what I'm doing. And this is so amazing. And uh, if it wasn't for Sean Camp, that wouldn't have happened. He's just a natural singer. He's one of those guys. It's like Tim O'Brien or Alan O'Brien or <clears throat> Bing Crosby, you know, or Frank Sinatra. They just open their mouth and beautiful music comes out. They don't have to try. And that's what's so great about it. That's why they sound so good. It's so wonderful to listen to them. And I get to, anytime the Earls play, I'm standing right beside this guy who can just sing the phone book and you'll be amazed. But uh, happy birthday, Camp. Love you, man. Can't wait to play. Ah, we've been trying all kinds of ways to play. We haven't worked it out yet. But... Well, let me play something, just a little something that's got some quickness to it, and then I'm going <clears> to <throat> take it out with a, a, another song. Mm. Let's see, what would it be? Oh, has anybody got any requests for any kind of song? What, what would you like to hear? If I can was to play something fast, what would you want to hear? Hmm, don't everybody jump at once. Uh, well, what is it? Spooky. Spooky. <laughs> Spooky. No. Okay. Let's play a little bit of, uh, how about this? How about this in honor of J.D. Crow? Uh, Jack, gonna have to practice that. But uh, happy birthday, JD. Happy birthday, Sean. I know there's more out there. Last weekend was uh, uh, last weekend was Barry Bales and Charlie Cushman, great Charlie Cushman, another banjo player. But uh, so we got those. Mm -hmm. Well, we lost uh, we lost a really wonderful wonderful guy and a really one big part of uh, second generation i guess you would have to say uh justin towns earl uh last week what a tragedy man who 
woke up to that news, just terrible. And, and my heart goes out to Steve and, and Justin's mom. And uh, I remember Justin getting up on stage at the Americana Awards the first year he won. And he had a red velvet suit on that his mother had just finished. And he got up on stage and he was so proud. He was wearing a bow tie and he, was, and he had this red suit on. It was the coolest thing in the whole world. And who else would think about it? You know, think to do that except him. He's a little quirky and he was just a fun guy. He, he was a lot like Steve and a lot like Towns. And, and I know that that's probably good and bad. But uh, they were brilliant. They were both brilliant guys. So Steve's still going in. Steve's a good friend of mine. And, and he's, he's a great big hearted fella who's got a lot of things on his mind and is not afraid to share them with you. And so don't be afraid to listen. He's got a lot of good things to say. But I want to... Being a, this is a little bit more about Steve, I guess. Was uh, He came in and, and uh, played on a record of mine. Uh, the, song, the record was called Restless on the Farm. And I took... Uh, that title came from the lyrics, one of the lyrics in this song. In fact, actually, it happens in the first verse. And I'm going to try to sing this and uh, play it at the same time, but it's it's going to be difficult. But um, it's called "Don't Take Your Guns to Town," and I think it's appropriate right now. And uh, you know, maybe I'll get some flack over this, but it's a song, folks, and uh, and it's a really great song. Johnny Cash sang in the 60s and uh, Steve came in to sing this on my record Steve Earle and as he was sitting there he wrote an epilogue verse an extra verse to this song at the end uh, that kind of brought it to up to uh, up to now you know it brought it up right to, to our time and it makes a lot of sense about a lot of things that are going on right now and uh, not to bum anybody out, but it's, I mean, just kind of listen to the song. It's a beautiful song, and but it does have a lot of meaning. It did 120 years ago, and it still does now. So it's a. A young cowboy named Billy Joe grew restless on the farm. <laughs> A good boy filled with wanderlust who really meant no harm. He changed his clothes and shined his boots and combed his dark hair down. And his mother cried as he walked out. Don't take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. He laughed and kissed his mom and said, you're a Billy Joe's man. And I can shoot as straight and quick as anybody can. But I wouldn't shoot without a cause. I'd gun nobody down. But she cried again as he rode away. Don't take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. <laughs> he rode into a cattle town, smile upon his lips. He stopped into a crowded bar and laid his money down. But she, but she cried again as he rode away. Don't take your guns to town, boy. Leave your guns. 
takes it home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. Drag his first strong liquor then to calm his shaking hand. <clears throat> he tried to tell himself at last he had become a man. But a dusty cowpoke at his side began to laugh him down. Mother's words echoed again. Don't take your guns to town, son. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. And in his rage, Billy Joe reached for his gun to draw. But the stranger drew his gun and fired before he even saw. As Billy Joe fell to the floor, the crowd all gathered round. And they wondered at his final words. Don't take your guns to town, boy. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Take your girls to death. It stays first. A hundred and twenty years have passed and nothing's really changed. A young man on these city streets, they have to make a name. He's still too young to know God don't make a boy a man. But his mama cries as he walks out. Don't take your guns to town, boy. Leave your guns at home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. Thanks for coming today, folks. See you in a couple weeks.